Ever felt like the world is spinning out of control? Or maybe you've experienced that sinking feeling of anxiety, taking over your day. You're not alone. Millions struggle with vertigo and anxiety, often feeling lost and overwhelmed. These debilitating conditions can disrupt your life, making even simple tasks a challenge. But there's hope. Today, we're diving deep into natural ways to manage vertigo and anxiety, empowering you to take back control. Together, we'll explore practical tips, lifestyle changes, and mind-body techniques to help you find relief and regain your balance. How to manage vertigo and anxiety naturally. Understanding Vertigo and Anxiety To effectively manage vertigo and anxiety, it's essential to understand what's happening in your body. Vertigo originates in the inner ear, which controls balance. When this system malfunctions, it sends confusing signals to the brain, resulting in that dizzy sensation. It makes sound waves in the air. The outer ear catches the which in turn vibrates three tiny bones called the malleus, incus, and stapes. These bones amplify or increase the sound vibrations and send them to the cochlea. The cochlea is shaped like a snail and is the size of a garden pea. Ions rush into the top of the hair cells, causing the release of chemicals at the bottom of the hair cells. The chemicals bind to the auditory nerve cells and create an electrical signal, which travels along the auditory nerve to the brain, which interprets the messages as sounds that we recognize and understand. Anxiety, on the other hand, is a complex interplay of brain chemistry and environmental factors. It often manifests as feelings of worry, fear, or unease. Interestingly, the same parts of the brain involved in balance are also connected to our emotional responses. What are the different parts of the brain and what do they do? The brain controls everything that we do and how our body functions. Control the different parts of our body. The largest part of the brain is called the cerebrum or forebrain. The cerebrum is divided into hemispheres, the left and the right hemisphere. The left hemisphere controls the right part of our body and the right hemisphere controls the left part, but they're divided into four lobes. The frontal lobe controls our speech, problem solving, movement, personality and sensations. The temporal lobe is where we process sounds and where our memories are stored. The parietal lobe is where touch, temperature and pain is processed. It's where we recognize objects and process information when people speak to us. The occipital lobe processes what we see. The brain is the cerebellum or hind brain. The cerebellum controls our balance, posture and coordination. The lower part of the brain is called the brain stem. It controls functions that we don't usually think about, such as breathing, sneezing, coughing, swallowing, 
on our heartbeat. This interconnectedness explains why vertigo and anxiety can often go hand in hand. What starts as a physical symptom can trigger anxiety and vice versa. But the good news is, by addressing both conditions simultaneously, we can find significant relief. Now that we understand the connection between vertigo and anxiety, let's explore some natural ways to manage your symptoms. Remember, it's essential to consult with your healthcare provider before starting any new regimen. Lifestyle modifications. Number one, stress management. Chronic stress can exacerbate both vertigo and anxiety. Incorporate relaxation techniques like meditation, deep breathing, or yoga into your daily routine. Number two, diet and nutrition. A balanced diet rich in antioxidants and anti-inflammatory foods can support overall health and potentially reduce vertigo symptoms. Stay hydrated and consider limiting caffeine and alcohol. Number 3. Exercise. Regular physical activity improves balance, reduces stress, and boosts mood. Try for low-impact exercises that won't aggravate vertigo. Home remedies. Ginger. Ginger is known for its anti-nausea properties and can help alleviate vertigo-related discomfort. Herbal teas. Chamomile and lavender teas have calming effects that can benefit both vertigo and anxiety. Mind-body techniques. Mindfulness and grounding. Mindfulness techniques can help reduce anxiety and improve your ability to cope with vertigo symptoms. Grounding exercises can help you stay present in the moment. Expert insights. While these natural approaches can be highly effective, it's important to consult with a healthcare professional for a comprehensive evaluation. They can rule out underlying medical conditions and provide additional guidance. Hi, Dr. Scott Beyer here. When it comes to vertigo, ultimately why people get it is that the brain cannot calibrate whatever information gets sent to it, it can't calibrate it or interpret it, so we get dizzy, okay? And if you guys seen any other video, you know that our, our body is equipped with hundreds of thousands of different sensors or receptors. There are ones in our eyes, there are ones in our muscles, there are ones in our inner ear called our vestibular system. And these, they are going almost 24 seven. So they're constantly, constantly, constantly feeding the brain with information because one of the most basic functions one of the most actually important functions that our brain needs to do is to be able to know what in the heck our body is doing, what our environment is doing in relationship to our body, because if we don't, it's very, very hard for us to ambulate, it's very, very hard for our species to survive, those types of things, okay? So these guys are constantly feeding, constantly sending messages up to the brain, and there's this one area that sits behind our brain. So to kind of orient ourselves, this right here is our cortex, okay? Below that, back and kind of beneath, underneath that, so it's this area of our brain called the cerebellum. And the cerebellum is, you know, we can spend hours and hours on this topic alone, but it tends to integrate certain information, okay? And it's very involved in like the timing, processing of information. And what it does is it takes all of this information and it, what it does is it, is it calibrates it, it condenses all of that information down into a nice, easily portrayed message to where it sends up to the cortex so the cortex can say, ah, this is what our body's actually doing, okay? Well, what happens is, is that if this system that dampens all of that input fails, what we see is it can no longer dampen all of this input coming in and the cerebellum starts over 
or having excessive output, okay? Now what happens is if we can't dampen that, the cerebellum will, will fire into other areas, okay? In particular, other areas of our brainstem. So when the cerebellum fires into, you know, certain areas like our pons or our medulla, it can, you can get things that like heart changes or blood pressure changes, heart palpitations, those types of things. If you've ever, you know, uh, were a kid and you went on like one of those crazy spinny teacup rides, okay, first of all, you know, your body has a lot more information coming in or your brain has a lot more information coming into the to the brain than just like walking on one of those spinny teacup rides but if you've ever been on one of those spinny teacup rides and uh, you got nauseous after it that's because your cerebellum couldn't handle all of that information and now we've gotten some spillover into the lower areas of our brainstem which which houses a lot of our gut function and that's in our medulla and that's when you get nauseous or sometimes even vomit but in particular with those with anxiety what happens is is if we see a failure of the dampening or being able to package that information nicely for the brain and there's too much firing um, our cerebellum can fire into this upper brain stem called our midbrain and that's kind of more like our reactive portion of our brain so when this tends to overfire up here it tends to promote things like um, sensitivities to bright light or loud noises or blood pressure changes or um, because it's a more reactive area of our brain um, people can tend to startle easier um, but what happens is chronically if this area is overstimulated what happens is, is people tend to uh, it tends to drive thought so people tend to think too much or they have this little motor that's going on in their head where when they try and shut it off they just can't so they have sleep issues and they tend to predict the worse and that's why a lot of times because um, vertigo is essentially you know a certain uh, weakness and in, in certain vital brain areas that are very closely linked to uh, other vital brain areas that help control behavior or anxiety. So this is a lot of times why we see these two linked and a lot of times if we're able to take care of some of the vertigo by proper you know diet or rehabilitation we'll start to see some of the anxiety go down as the vertigo goes down. Here we would like to emphasize the importance of a personalized approach. Remember, everyone's experience with vertigo and anxiety is unique. Combining natural remedies with professional care can help you find the best path to recovery. Conclusion Taking control of vertigo and anxiety is a journey, not a destination. By incorporating these natural strategies into your life, you can significantly improve your quality of life. Remember, consistency is key. Be patient with yourself. Celebrate small victories. And don't hesitate to seek professional guidance when needed. We encourage you to share your experiences and tips in the comments below. Your insights can inspire others on their own healing journey.